Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back my dear friends, a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you wherever you are in this part of the globe and uh, my good name is Raghunandan Sengupta uh, from IME department at IIT Kanpur and as you know this is a SWAM lecture series uh, lecture of 30 hours and the main idea being investment analysis and portfolio management. So, in the last class we were discussing about the single index model uh, based on the idea of simple uh, relationship between the script and the market. So, because there is, there is co movement based on the market and we also saw the important point that uh, the properties which are generally considered in the linear regression model are also considered in theoretical format conceptually or practically they give a different idea, but uh, theoretically they also hold for the single index model. And we saw later on that how we can simply derive the returns, the risk and how the calculations can be done. And we also saw that how in place of standard deviation we can replace beta as another good measure for risk. We will uh, in this class discuss or in the lecture uh, for one hour discuss about the multi index model and the corresponding concepts uh, which are uh, necessary for the same. So, as the slide says the title is investment analysis and portfolio man management under the broad area uh, one of the sub, sub areas which we are discussing is portfolio theory and in this 11th lecture we will try to cover multi index model uh, averaging techniques the constant variance and constant covariance um, concept and further on discuss the relevance of them. Now, as we have discussed the single index model uh, in the same light we will discuss the multi index model and if you remember in the single index model we have we were, we were constantly saying about linear regression. So, this concept of linear regression is further developed considering in the multivariate case we have the multi uh, multivariate um, concept being brought into multi linear regression and the assumptions which are true in the theoretical sense for MLR multiple linear regression will also be considered in the same way in this multi index model. So, why it is used? Using this methodology we try to capture some of the non market influences that cause securities to move together. So, if you remember in the single index model. So, the main idea is whether I write capital R or small r the concept remains the same. So, I have this and obviously, if there is no bar there is an error term. So, considering there bar means the average values we have this. And we saw that the overall risk from this model we saw the overall risk can be broken down into the market and basically the so called non market which 
in general parlance you are saying that there is some risk which can be diversified, other risks cannot be diversified, systematic risk, non-systematic risk, all those things. Now, what we are trying to do is that we are trying to understand in this part multi index whether the overall risk which is there. So, say for example, the market is able to give 70 percent of the information about the risk and 30 percent is from the market. Say for example, now in the multi index model we want to be much more sure that this 100 percent of this information which is coming from the risk whether it is possible to divide into further on on informations not the market may be the macroeconomic parameters, this inflation rate, interest rate, gold price, petroleum price, crude oil, Brent crude oil price and all these things whether collectively taken together and broken down into different components they will be able to give a better information about the overall risk. So, this idea would seem very familiar to the multiple linear regression model when compared to the linear regression model. That means, when multi index model being compared to the single index model. So, let me continue reading further. So, we want, want to capture some of the non market influence. Non market influence is basically what I have written here. So, so, we want to consider non market influences that causes the securities to move together, the SCO movement. So, even though I have written about the risk, which basically is the idea is when you are writing it R i is the, is the return. So, how you can find out the return based on these factors, one being the market, another being the non market. So, searching for non market influences is akin to searching for corresponding different economic factors and influences that account for common movement in the stock prices and the factors which I have already mentioned are inflation rate, coal price, silver price and so on and so forth. The basic use of multi index model is to predict the correlation coefficients. So, if you would analyze if you go back to the initial model problem when when we, we are considered. So, we had initially the covariance of i and j why i and j means the stocks which are considering. So, whether and actually it was broken down that when i is equal to j you had sigma square i and that was basically given from the information. So, these all the informations were given based on sigma square m and the weights were there if you remember and the betas were there. So, this this is basically in the inform uh, the the information would be coming from here. So, rather than putting here information of all data is coming here. That means, I can find out sigma square i and if it was sigma i j. So, all the informations were basically coming from beta i, beta j, sigma square m that means, the corresponding beta values. Now, actually we want to find out something to do with the correlation coefficient which is rho i j because the covariance actually if I have covariance of i j is equal to rho i j into sigma i into sigma j. So, rho i j is the correlation coefficient, sigma i is basically the standard deviation of the ith one, sigma j is the standard deviation of the jth one. So, we generally want to basically predict the correlation coefficient or so have some information on the correlation coefficients and we will see that within minutes. Some other uses can be to form the expected expectation about the returns and study the change in the return due to impact of events. It is also a method which helps in, 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 in tailoring the return distribution of the portfolio to the specific need of the investor. 
and method of attributing the cause of good or, or bad on performance of the portfolio. So, you can differentiate the factors accordingly. Now, here it is how the model is written. So, before any of you paying attention to the, the slide or me explaining that, let me change the background and go to the multiple linear regression. Now, for the multiple linear regression, I may not be able to draw the three dimension um, figure properly considering is a two dimension surface, but I will discuss about the multiple linear regression and then draw the, the similarities between the multiple linear regression and the multi index model as I have done for the uh, simple linear regression and the single index model. So, let us draw the first uh, the space, space is basically the three dimension one. So, so, I have considered this is y, this is x 1, x 2, these are the variables. So, scattered in this three dimension points, these are the points in three dimension. which are have a coordinates of x 1, x 2 and y. And what we want to do is that we want to fit the best fit plane. So, in the single index model or simple linear regression, we fitted the best fit line now with the best fit plane such that the distances. The, so, plane is basically the so called a line was basically the the um, predicted set of points. So, now we want to find out the difference or the distance between the predicted point and the actual point and mark it as errors. So, the, when the plane is fit, consider the plane is fit here. And we drop perpendicular lens to find out so called there would be something in bit below also. So, it will be negative and we want to find out. So, the space can be there. So, it is going like this and we find find try to fit in the plane and, and do the calculation. So, when we write it down the equation, the equation is like this. So, I am writing the similar equation for the multiple linear regression. It is y is equal to alpha do, uh, do not confuse this alpha with the alpha which you are considering there into beta 1 x 1 do not confuse this beta 1 with the beta 1 for the, uh, the risk factors. So, these alpha and beta which I am writing in red are from the concept of statistics x 1 is the first random variable beta 2 is the second random variable and consider there are such p number of random variables. So, it is beta p x p plus epsilon. So, epsilon and, and in this concept uh, when we write it in the form of uh, matrix multiplication basically you will have y is equal to beta x plus epsilon. So, let me make it bold because this is in the concept of matrix multiplication these can be vectors or matrices with proper dimension I am not writing the dimension they can be easy find out. So, in general if you have n number of data points and p number of and this x's so, they can be put here in the equation in order to give you the exact dimension based on which this model can be written. Now, in the multiple linear regression, what are the assumptions? Assumptions are again drawing our information uh, what we had uh, drawn there, we will just bring it here and expand the discussion. Point 1 would be x 1 to x p 
are independent of each other x 1 to x p and y are normally distributed with a certain mean and a certain standard deviation. The errors have a 0 mean and some standard deviation or variance. I am not writing down the equation, I am just qualitatively describing them and come back here again. When, when, when we actually come back to the multi index, multiple index or multi index model, things will be clear. Uh, the other one is that the errors and the betas are, are uncorrelated and all these things. So, I just mentioned the four important points. There are others, I will come back to them and these four important points will be come out immediately as we discuss the multi index prop model properties. Now, in the similar line as you have the multiple linear regression, let me write it as MLR. M L R multiple linear regression. In the similar line, I have the multi index model. It is R i is basically the return of the i stock is equal to alpha i. So, this alpha i what is written here and this alpha they are in the same symbol, but they are not the same into B i 1 into i 1 plus B i 2 into I 2 till the last one which is B i L into I L plus epsilon. So, error error is same these I 1 capital I 1 to I L are basically the so called the variables which are x 1 to x p there. So, here there are L number of variables independent variables there are p number of independent variables in the multiple linear regression and this beta B 1 B 2 B L Similarly, like beta 1 to beta p are the multiple linear regression coefficients. So, technically it would mean that if in the MLR we know that considering x 2 to x p are constant beta 1 and considering alpha being there which is a constant. So, then in that case beta 1 will give you the rate of change of y with respect to x 1 partial differentiation. This concept of of uh, partial correlation coefficient, correlation coefficients all these things are uh, important for MLR and uh, if you do a little bit studying in statistics those things would be clear. Because this is not being a statistics course I am not going to go into the details. Similarly, you will have beta 2 given, given x 1, x 3 till x p being constant then the rate of change of y with respect to x 2 partial differentiation obviously will be given by beta 2 and so on and so forth. Now, in the similar way beta b 1 till b l will imply the same thing. So, now let us see what are the assumptions. The first one assumptions which we have considered uh, here in the MLR is uh, in the, in the in multi index model is which I am just putting a tick mark. The first one is the expected value of the error is 0 and rightly so, because we have also said as we were discussing the MLR model, the error has a 0 mean and a certain standard deviation. So, this is done and matches. The second bullet point where I am putting a second two tick mark is basically the variance of errors is sigma square epsilon, which is right, because we did consider epsilon has a uh, expected value of mean of 0 and a variance of sigma square and in many of the, so generally we would write at as. So, as we are discussing for the MLR errors would be n and if as it is an MLR model multi multiple linear regression it would be given by this. So, these are vectors. So, that is why I bold. So, this is the in the case when you use the multi multi normal distribution multiple normal distribution. Now, in the case when you have the multi index model in the first two information set is right. The third one gives obviously I did mention 
that each of these excess in the multiple linear regression model have a have a mean and a standard deviation in the same light yes the variance for each of these index i1 to ij have a um, the value given by sigma square sub x i here i put the three tick marks and obviously one point which is not written here that is the expected value of ij would be given by say for example i am putting i bar j is for the sample and the corresponding value if I use the symbol from the case of expected value mean mu it will be given by this. So, this is basically for the population and this is basically for the sample. The fourth is here it gives you the independence between I 1 and I 2 or all the market in indices which are taken. Market indices I do not mean the, the actual the index is basically the other different index factors which can be taken for the multi index model. So, if they are independent hence the covariance basically is 0 which is here in the fourth point marked with the four tick marks. And as I am talking about you see the index, index i changes to 1 to n and i j changes to 1 to l and so on as well. So, these are I am not mentioning because they are simple to understand. Now, the fourth one which I just mentioned here if they are independent it means that if you consider the multiple linear model and when you go to this matrix equation. So, actually it will mean then we can solve it using the Gauss Johnman method. So, in that case what we will basically have you would try to solve that and in this equation when you solve is basically you take the partial differentiation find out the error partially differentiate it with respect to x 1s and, and find it out. So, as you are doing it you will need to basically have the equation given where you need to find out the inverse of x matrix. Now, when you want to find out the inverse in the sense then you need to find out that the properties of all the row independence the rank of the matrix which we know should be exactly equal to p p means the number of the so called independent variables which are there and if these equations are in one of the independent then obviously the determinant determinant value would be not existing so that means you should have p number of linear equations to be solved to find out the p number of decision variables or the variables the decision variables being x 1 to x p. In the same light when you come here the multi index model that idea which is given by the four tick marks here the fourth point is exactly the same they should be independent. So, I talked about the rank from the point of view of, of mathematics, but conceptually it would mean that the, you cannot find, find a unique point which will satisfy the set of equations. And the last point which is given here which for which I am putting a tick mark it is that covariance between the error and the in indices I 1 to I capital J L sorry are independent. So, if I go back to the multiple linear regression it means that the error term and the excess have no dependence exactly the same what I have repeated are being repeat shown here in the context of the multi index model. Now, with this model we will try to solve it. So, the first part 
we we already had the first one was basically given as r i bar is equal to alpha plus b 1 i 1 l number of such independent parameters sorry this will be l error. So, I take the expected value So, this becomes r i bar is equal to alpha plus b 1. So, technically this is for the i th 1. So, I should put an i here i 1 bar b l comma i i l bar plus this is a 0. So, I should remove it. And if you see this equation, this is exactly equal to the one which is given here. And why these are I 1 bar to I L bar, if you remember, I had written it here as well. So, we had considered the average value here. Now, let us come back to the uh, factor of variance. So, I will use the different color. So, I need to find out the variance means variance of I R, R i is equal to variance of alpha plus beta 1 comma i capital I 1 plus dot 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 is equal to b not beta b sorry b l comma i i l plus epsilon. So, this becomes sigma square i. Now, how many such terms are there? l plus 2. So, first if I consider the l plus 2, let me write it here actually we need the variance covariance matrix of a matrix of size l plus 2 cross l plus 2. Now, the principal diagonal would be the variances and the off the diagonal element with the covariances. So, if I first let us concentrate on only the principal diagonal values. Variance of alpha which is a fixed value is 0. So, basically we will have starting the second term which is 2 comma 2 here an element here. This will be b 1 comma i whole square sigma square i 1 dot dot till the second last term which is b l comma i whole square sigma square i l plus thus variance of the error. And what happens to the of the diagonal element is very interesting, because the covariance of alpha which is the fixed term with all the terms are 0 gone. These i 1 to i l are all independent, covariance is 0. So, they are covariance, so the covariance being 0 that those elements also vanish. And finally, the covariance between alpha and x is we have assumed them to be 0. So, that also vanishes. So, of the diagonal element all the elements are 0. So, they do not exist. So, we would only have L plus 1 term because out of the L plus 2 term the first one corresponding to alpha vanishes. So, let us check what we have derived is actually the one which is written here. So, if I concentrate on this, this is exactly equal to the 1 which is written here. So, to sigma square i is equal to b, b 1 square sigma square i 1 so on and so forth till the second last term and the last one is sigma square epsilon. And this 
we know we are getting from the assumption that errors are normally distributed with a mean value 0 and a certain variance. And if I consider this was sigma i, so if I consider sigma i j the covariance between i and j just multiply and consider the factors without going to the details, we find out the covariance which is sigma i j is given by this. And this information we already know from the single index model, before in the single index model we know the sigma i j is equal to actually beta i beta j sigma square m which is the market. Now, in this case as different uh, market factors are there, factors are there let me not use the word market fact factors are there. So, those factors have a risk value given by sigma square corresponding to 1, 2, 3, 4 tail l and the corresponding uh, beta values are being replaced by b 1, b 2, so on and so forth. So, some variables which are used in multi index model can be economic growth, the rate of economic growth, business cycles, long term interest rate, short term interest rate, inflation, foreign currency like rupee 2, US dollars, rupee versus yen, rupee versus UK pound, rupee versus euros, Brent, Brent crude value, uh, gold price, silver price and all these things. So, these are basically what we are considering and the factors 1 to L. So, this is just an assignment which I have given prepared a three page write up about how multi index models are implemented in industry and the different nomenclature how the report should be prepared are given. So, it is not a part of this discussion now, but I thought I will just mention and one can have different good uh, ideas reading the books from references which are already there. So, this is another example taking the index of one company uh, from the NSE you prepare a multi index model that means, we take only one, one uh, stock at considering mar market is not the only influencing factor we consider all these factors which I have just been mentioned based on that we try to predict how good or bad the prediction is with respect to the single index model. Now, we are changing our discussion to the averaging techniques and why the word averaging I am going to come to that. So, averaging or smoothing techniques are used with respect to the historical correlation data as the forecast of the future. So, we are using the historical correlation data to forecast further on. For multi normal distribution we can assume S, S is basically the best estimate we get from the sample that is the best estimate which is there for the quotient coefficient matrix. So, based on that we will do that and that is true that is true that can be proved. So, why the need for averaging technique models a bet better averaging model would would be to assume that there would be a common mean correlation within and between groups of stocks that means inter and intra information or a common mean correlation would be better. This is to say that we, if we have one group of stocks as steel stocks or one group of stocks as tech stocks or one group of stocks as the automobile stocks or say for example, the cement stocks then the past correlation structure between the steel stocks would be the best predictor of the future correlation structure between the steel stocks. So, past steel stock data correlation would be the best predictor for the future. Similarly, the past one for the cement would be there for the future of cement and we can also find out the correlation existing between these sectors would also be utilized to predict the value of this correlation for between the sectors for the future also. That means, we are taking everything from the past and trying to basically predict for the future and for each sector wise and inside them and the relationship between the sectors can be 
considered uh, the best predictor for the future accordingly. Moreover, which I just said, moreover the correlation between any steel stock and any cement stock is assumed to be same. That means, if we have say for example, consider rather than the cement, if we have say for example, the steel stock sale, then say for example, Tesco and so on as for there are different and on the other hand you have <coughs> Tata Motors, you have Maruti, Suzuki, you have Mahindra, Mahindra. So, what I meant is the correlation which is existing between sale and Tata Motors or sale as MSIL or sale or MNM can be considered and these values are same they will be considered to be constant and also equal for that between Tisco, Tata Motors, Tisco, MSIL and Tisco MNM. Even though it is a very simplistic assumption, but it helps. I should use a different color here, sorry, my mistake. So, all these would be constant, fixed and one value can be utilized. Hence, to make this calculation simple, this idea, we take this value of average of the correlation between each steel and each cement stock is taken in pairs and is con considered to be fixed. So, this simple technique for determining the efficient frontier. So, now again we are utilizing going back to the main idea and idea was basically to given this r i is return values, you want to find out the efficient frontier. So, we had spent a lot of time in trying to find out how the r i s can be found, found out given the market as the index, single index model and the multi index model. So, further going back to the same um, idea what we want to find out, we will describe here the methods of selecting the optimum portfolio considering the single index model and the constant variance covariance matrix. So, we will use this idea of the single index model what we have studies and draw the efficient frontier and also we will use the constant variance covariance matrix and based on the idea we will also find out the efficient frontier. So, on all these things our idea is basically to do something with the returns. Now, for the single index model we know I let me write down the single index model. We know R i bar is equal to alpha plus beta i into R m R m bar. So, we would be interested in finding a single number that measures the desirability of including a stock in the optimum portfolio. Now, why I am using this word or this idea? So, if the value of returns is high, obviously it will mean the average is high, but it will also must give us the information that what is the risk. Because higher the return and higher the risk with respect to the stock, higher the return and lower the risk. If, we, if there are two cases, obviously I will be tempted to take that particular stock what is the returns are higher and the risk are low, because we have to make a balance. So, this balance would be coming from the fact that I should have a particular measure based on which it will give me how desirable it is or it is not to include the stock in the optimal portfolio. That desirability, desirability to include the stock in that portfolio is very simply given by this ratio and this is very interesting one. Now, if, if you remember few minutes back I mentioned that how high or low the average value is with respect to how high the low the variance is. So, if I have expected value and the variance. So, 
higher the expected value better for me lower the variance better for me so if i want to take the ratio i can consider expected value i am only writing e here of e of r so i can take the ratio of er by vr and take the highest value as better and the lowest ratio being not good rather than that we could also take the variance with respect to expected value and then take the lowest value rank because the ranking is just reversed so the lowest value here because the variance should always be minimized return should be maximized and if i consider this it is basically equal to so this one when translated it is ri bar divided by sigma square i i now this is exactly which is being passed on here rather than use ri bar i consider excess return with respect to the risk free interested so this could also have been considered as ri bar minus rf divided by this or in place of sigma square we could also use also use sigma also like variance being replaced by standard deviation this is exactly which is here in the numerator i have the excess return i am now using the different color and in the denominator rather than using sigma i am using beta because i did mention in the last class that we have in the course of discussion we have very subtly replaced the risk from the from using the symbol as sigma to beta so the the concept of risk has been replaced from individually concept of standard deviation to the market risk concept of the beta so here the ratio would be we want to maximize the ratio ri bar minus rf in the numerator and beta in the denominator so this means let me continue reading it this means the additional return over the risk over and above the risk free interest rate divided by the risk in this case the risk is the beta as mentioned here i am just marking this point time and again and before i i go to the next slide remember the idea which is which is mentioned here would again come back later on so let us have patience now we will slowly consider the idea that we want to maximize this so this means sorry 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 and the conditions can be short selling there and short selling being not there because short selling being there not there would obviously mean we have the case where the risk free interest is there and actually the so it will be this one the q point you will remember we have been discussed and this goes on and this is basically rf we had considered this this part being the point where um short selling is not there so now if there is no short selling then if this ratio is negative or zero it would not so if it is zero or negative it means that i would rather invest in the bank i would not utilize that money to buy or sell that particular stock because short selling is not allowed so we would not include that particular stock in the portfolio if short selling for this ratio is negative it would mean that 
if if in the case of short selling is there and it is negative we will mean that we will short sell this stock that is borrow this stock so that is include in the portfolio so very simply positive values as well as negative values will be considered here short selling not there positive values would be considered while negative values technically would not be because it will be zero then so in this negative values when it is there short selling is there that means they had been short sold and money being utilized so this is what the scheme is so without short selling if the ratio ri bar minus rf by beta is greater than some c star this c star value i'll come to that later on if it is there we will include so a greater than c will include because for the case we have without short selling and when we have less than c star it will we would not include because this is a short selling case and when we have the case when short selling is there with short selling so i just multiple highlighted this the corresponding would be same ratio it is greater it will be included and in the case when it is less it will also be included so the main idea is that without short selling and with short selling these are the same they will be included obviously but in the case when without short selling and without with short selling these two cases are subtly different as it could be and we'll see that very slowly the main thing is basically how we need to find out c star because all of these things mentions c star c star c star c star so we need to find it out how do we calculate it and is it there is a simple straightforward methodology the problem has now the condition that short selling be not allowed so if it is not allowed technically ri greater than c star include less than c star do not include because short selling not allowed and riskless lending borrowing being allowed that's why this rf is here so whatever i mentioned let me make it clear so being allowed is for this fact and not allowed is for this fact which basically once written here this translates here so technically this would lead here and this would lead us here the rule works as follows we will find the excess return to beta ratio for each stock that means ri minus rf divided by beta and rank them from the highest to the lowest highest values would basically mean the should be included in more quantity the optimal stock consists of all the investment in the stocks which have value ri minus rf divided by beta greater than c star they will be positive as i mentioned and ri minus rf divided by beta if they are less than equal to c star you would not invest because short selling is not there so let us consider the problem so 
I have I here in the first column these are values of R i bar sorry let me check whether they can be just um, they have removed it due to I think the compatibility of the software in the computer that problem happens I am sorry for that yeah so they are back in action. So, it would not be repeated here I will try to overcome that. So, if you see I have i starting from 1 to 10 I have r i bar they are from 15, 17, 12 so on and so forth. So, they are random random in the sense the values have not been ranked from the highest lowest to the highest. So, considering that r f is 5 I have found out r i bar minus r f given in the third column the values are from 10 to 6 0.6 beta values are given 1 to 0.6 sigma square epsilon is given. What is important to note that we have ranked them considering the last column which is r i minus r f divided by beta. So, even if they are, are not ranked once you calculate you rank them based on our these values because higher the values of r i minus r f divided by beta obviously, it will be higher higher than c star that will basically be included in more proportions. So, I just want to mention here you have i value r i bar value r i minus r f value beta value sigma square value and the ratio of r i minus r f divided by beta and the ranking has been done on the last column. So, these values are given. So, there is nothing extra information only the information is given no extra calculation has been done. And also remember sigma square m is given here which is the market risk and another one was basically the RF so risk free interest rate. Now, let us do the calculation we are doing in an excel sheet let us do the calculation. So, the initial sets of all the data are subsumed now only we are concentrating on R i minus R f divided by beta based on which the ranking was done the last column in the in the slide in the last slide they have been ranked 10 8 7 6 there are values 2 6 and, and so on and so forth. Now, we do and find find out this only I would not go into the values I will just mention what are the columns. The third column is R i minus R f divided by sigma square multiplied by beta. Why they are required a detailed discussion can be done if time permits when we are solving the problem and come to that. The fourth column is beta square divided by sigma square these values we already know beta sigma we already know. The third fourth value is the summation of R i minus R f divided by sigma square into beta. So, the third column which was there already this one this being summed up and the fourth column was basically the summation of the next column. Now, there is some important point to be discussed. The summations has been done from j to i remember that is very important that means, if I am and the i are, are the values which are denoted here. So, if I am at i s 3 my summation will be j is equal to 1, j is equal to 2, j is equal to 3. If I am i is equal to 7 so, j will be j is equal to 1, j is equal to 2, j is equal to 3, j is equal to 4, j is equal to 5, j is equal to 6, j is equal to 7. Similarly, 
the concept will be utilized for the last column also. Why I am mentioning that? Keep in mind it will become very relevant and very important when we are considering the concept and trying to compare these methodologies when short selling is allowed and in other case short selling is not allowed. Here short selling is not being allowed. So, based on that I sum them up. So, the first value of R i minus R f divided by sigma square in beta the first value is 2 by 10. So, this is 2 by 10, 2 by 10. Second value is when i is equal to 2, j is equal to 1, 2 is basically 2 by 10 divided plus 4.5 divided by 10 which is 6.5 divided by 10. Then I add up 3.5 it becomes 10 by 10, then I add 24 it becomes 34 by 10, then I add 1.5 because uh, I am going step by step, then it becomes 35.5 by 10 and so on and so forth to the last value which becomes 41.1 by 10. Similarly, if I do it for the next column which is beta square by sigma square, the first value is 2 by 10, second value is 2 plus 5.6 uh, by 100 sorry, 2 plus 5.6 divided by 100 which is 7.63, I am not repeating the 100. Next you add 5, then it becomes 12.63, then you take add 40, it becomes 52.63 and so on and so forth with the denominator value being 100. So, this is the case, I am repeating this value is important, the summation is important for the fact when short selling is not allowed. Now, I find out the C i value, C i value is from this in the numerator here of sigma square summation of j is equal to 1 to i for each step. So, i is 1 you take j is equal to 1, i is 2 j is equal to 1 and 2 and so on and so forth. R i minus R f divided by sigma square into beta i 1 plus sigma square into beta square summation of beta square into sigma square i all these values are there. So, remember this concept the summation i summation i these we follow the concept as we have done in the last slide which is 22 short selling not allowed. So, j is equal to would be 1 to i, i i goes 10 step by step. So, if I have these values, I have the c i values and remember very interestingly c i values increases reaches the maximum value and then goes down. So, this value 5.45 is the C star which you have been talking about. So, which means that when I have R i minus R f divided by beta i greater than C star, we include less than equal to C star, we do not include because short selling is not allowed, we will use that concept accordingly. So, this C star implies that for all sets of in the sense if this is true they will be included and for assets if this less than the sign is there they would not be included. This is due to the fact that short selling is not being allowed. So, this is I have repeated time and again. So, let me move to the next graph. Remember one important thing which I had mentioned again I am reporting, reporting it here. The summation is being done from j is equal to 1 to i. This is true for the case when short selling is not allowed. So, these values of summation is important. So, j is equal to 1 to i only and this will idea will come up later on in a different way when short selling is being considered. So, the weights are given by the formula this these can be derived I am not going to go into the derivation as required simple derivations are there. I find out w i's based on that I do that and c star is given by this value. Here then n here does not mean the whole set of the uh, of these assets are considered here it is important. The n which I have written here it did not does not mean all the n's 
that the 12 n's or the 10 n's which are there in the example, it only means till that value n where the ratio of r bar i minus r f divided by beta i was greater than c star and they had been included till that value of i. But only that means only the set of assets which you have included in this portfolio in our example it is 5 because you remember c star was coming out to the value at the fifth asset. Now these are the values based on the equation I find out the weights, but very interestingly these are the non normalized weights that if you add the up, them up they do not add up to 1, this one is not true. You have to normalize them and if you remember this c is 5 as had been mentioned, so the summation n is technically 5. If say for example c star was found out to be the, for the 8th one, so n would have been 8 not 10. So, when I find out the normalized weight that means I take w i divided by the sum of the weights. So, these are the non normalized weights and as if you check, check the sum add up to 1 as it should be which means that I invest 20 I am not talking about the decimal 28 percent in the first 27 in for the second stock 22 in the third one 19 for the third, fourth one and 2 percent in the last stock other stocks at short selling is not allowed 5th to 8 are not included. So, with this I will end uh, on this lecture uh, 11th one and uh, continue discussing about the models here important thing being we have considered short selling was not allowed we will slowly expand the discussion in the same model and the same data where short selling is being considered and how the calculations would be done. I know for the last part there were a lot of formulas. I repeated that I am not going to derive one that will be become more technical statistical one or quantitative finance and with that will really consume lot of time. So, based on that I have uh, included that uh, these formulas and the equations which are given they can be easily found out using uh, the excel sheet. I will try to include one or two excel sheet problems for this after we complete the part related to short selling uh, being considered. Have a nice day and thank you very much for your attention.